Humanoid robots. The industry is enormous. The global industry, the global labor market is worth more than $30 trillion. It's far, far bigger than the automotive industry. And that market is growing, unlike the automotive industry, which is shrinking. The only logical thing to do if you are an automaker with the ability to train neural networks with the, the understanding of how advanced software works with robotics, you have no choice but to make robots because you can make trillions or go bankrupt in the automotive industry. Tesla has no choice. I'm fully convinced that Tesla will be the first company to make advanced humanoid robots. And I believe eventually they will replace you and I. This will be really, really good for Tesla. They're going to make hundreds of billions of dollars. Eventually, they will very likely be the biggest company in the world. If Elon Musk's companies don't dwarf them with XAI or anything else he decides to create, it's all a little bit scary, to be honest. But whilst there are some enormous positives for humanoid robots, they will do amazing things. Be your friend. Could help with depression. Create enormous abundance worldwide. Do all the dirty, crappy jobs. Clean the toilets. Get your food when you need your food. All, all these things that could be fantastic. But there is one big downside that we are currently overlooking. And I'll get to that at the end of the video. There's definitely a lot of doubters, guys, when it comes to Tesla's robots, right? The Tesla bot, a lot of people are saying that it's, it's not very advanced, it's very simple, it doesn't work very well. But I don't think people understand that the key point, the key issue here, it's not really how well the arms and the feet and the, the feet and the toes and everything actually move because that's actually relatively simple. That will come. What is the big deal when it comes to Tesla's robots? Why is Tesla in position to have much better robotics than other companies? Well, there are some key reasons and Tesla have just explained that actually the robot has significantly improved. Here are the, some of the differences. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. There's a there's a news article that came out this morning, and it, it was interesting because it said that Tesla, well, not Tesla, actually, XAI and Elon Musk, they actually just built out uh, the world's biggest supercomputer, and it took them apparently only a couple of months. Or actually, sorry, I stand corrected. It took 19 days. Apparently, they say that Tesla's competition or XAI's competition, I shouldn't keep saying Tesla because XAI and Tesla are two different companies. Apparently XAI's competition have been taking around four years to build out similar computers, but none of them have ever built a computer stack this large. Tesla, of course, is going to be using their own, their own enormous supercomputer, plus apparently they'll be leveraging XAI as well in order to speed up development of the bot. Now that means that Tesla has access to the fastest computer in the world and maybe the second or third fastest computer in the world or most powerful computer in the world with the most compute power. All of that is, you know, it's probably neither here nor there if you're not a tech nerd, but it's as much to say in basically what that means is that in combination with all the data that Tesla have been collecting, when they've been collecting data to build their neural network for cars, well, they can do the same thing for the bot. So really the key issue here is not the hardware of the bot, it's the software. Tesla recently shared an update video though, show, showing the uh, recent capabilities of its bot or humanoid robot. The update video was posted less than a week after the Wii Robot event. In fact, it's just been posted within the past 48 hours. This 90 second video from Tesla was shared on their official Tesla Optimus account. Could be worth, you know, if you follow this kind of thing, you actually subscribe, I'll put a link in the description. The video shows some of the capabilities at Optimus and what it can do, how it's improved its walking, uh, its ability to explore unseen spaces autonomously, avoiding people and obstacles using neural networks. That's the key difference between Tesla's robot and something like uh, Boston Dynamics. Boston Dynamics have some incredibly good robots, right? They can jump and dance and do all kinds of fancy stuff. But that's, to be honest, that's neither here nor there. The robots have been able to do that for years. The difference now is being able to use a neural network to actually learn like a child learns. If you can learn like a child, then you can do some advanced stuff after you you know, speed up the pace of learning, you learn faster than a person does. And then if you use time, the idea is that Tesla's bots will be very much like humans. Very big difference to simply be able to jump really high or lift really, really heavy things. 
These are impressive things for a bot that Tesla just shared. But like I said, it's really the software development that matters the most, the ability for the robot to think like a person. Tesla said in its video that multiple Optimus robots would be able to build a shared understanding of their surroundings, which they can later tap into for navigation. And what they all do is, because Tesla has so much, such a large ability to store all the data that the robots are collecting, they can actually share that between themselves. So one robot learns one thing, and the others, all of them learn it. Imagine that. Imagine if you know one human being out of say a million human beings learns something, and the other 999,999 all learn the same thing, right? And then everyone learns many, many things every single day. That's kind of what Tesla are aiming for here. One thing that I noticed in Tesla's Optimus update video, which was actually pointed out by Tesla as well when I looked at their article, they first looked at the humanoid ch robot's charging system. How does it charge? Now, one of the big advantages, one of the reasons why Tony Sebron, uh, to be honest, all the other futurists say human beings will be replaced pretty soon is because robots don't complain. They shop to work, they're cheap to operate, the cost of energy to run them in theory is cheap. But that, remember, could potentially be a key differentiator between robots. Which one is the cheapest to operate? which one requires the least amount of energy. And that's one of the differences between say a Tesla car, which is very, very efficient, not the most efficient. Yeah, Lucid are more efficient, but Lucid are much, much more expensive. So it's not really, not really a very good comparison. So the key issue here is can you build millions of these robots or at least hundreds of thousands at the start? And can they be super efficient? Optimus apparently is going to utilize a very efficient charging system. I don't know exactly what that is, but hopefully we find out soon. Apparently, their Optimus can now locate, navigate, and dock with its wall-mounted charger autonomously, so it can charge itself. No need to actually go out there when it's dead on the floor and get a human being to go and plug it in. This is kind of crazy, and it's kind of scary, to be honest. After its charging session, Optimus can then undock itself from its charger and then go back to work. The Tesla team has made a lot of, apparently, a lot of progress in making Optimus actually useful in the factories, and I mean, I know Tesla are not the only company doing this. I know there's multiple companies working on their robots, but there isn't really any other major automakers or any other real AI companies that I think are putting this much investment into the robots. And that is probably why we're gonna see the pace of improvement in the Tesla bot drastically improve. Optimus can now carry much heavier loads and it can climb up some stairs. Tesla's Optimus update showed the robot serving food and drinks to members of the Tesla team. So this is what Tesla actually tweeted out. They said, while we were busy making it walk, its walk more robust for 10 out of 10, we've also been working on additional pieces of autonomy for Optimus. The absence of useful GPS in most indoor environments makes visual navigation central for humanoids. That's a good point. The absence of GPS in an indoor environment. Obviously, Google doesn't map out the inside of your house or inside of a factory, does it? So that's one of the reasons why Tesla is saying they need to use their neural network, which is vision-based, doesn't use LiDAR, right, to actually navigate a factory. Now, imagine sticking all LiDARs and radar sensors all on these robots. It would make them quite expensive. Optimus can now navigate new places autonomously using 2D cameras, while avoiding obstacles as it stores distinctive visual features in our cloud. And it can do so while carrying significant payloads. With this, Optimus can autonomously head to a charging station, dock itself, and charge as long as necessary. Our work on autopilot has greatly boosted these efforts. The same technology is used in both car and the bot, barring some details, and of course, the data set needed to train the bot's AI, which is obviously different. It does different things to a car. Separately, we've also been starting tackling non-flat terrain and stairs. Finally, Optimus started learning to interact with humans. We trained its neural net to hand over snacks and drinks upon gestures and voice requests. All neural nets currently used by Optimus manipulation tasks, visual obstacles, detection, localization, navigation run on its embedded computer directly, leveraging our AI accelerators. A lot of work ahead, but exciting times. One of the fears I have is, yeah, we're gonna lose our jobs. There's, there's no question, eventually, even I will. I mean, even robots will replace YouTubers. But 
The other issue that I see is, you know, when robots are doing everything for us, you know, Tesla is saying they've already programmed it to serve you food and drinks. Are you going to go and make food and drinks yourself? I mean, I just made my boys dinner today, right? It's, I've got to do it all pretty much every day. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. If I had a robot do it all right and do a really good job, a better job than me, not burn the food ever, cook it perfectly, um, potentially um, make it more nutritious, would I not do it? I probably would. But then what would I look like after a couple of years? How fat would I be? That's the thing, right? During COVID, a lot of us were housebound. We didn't walk to the train station to go to work. We did a lot less general movement and we got fatter and more unhealthy. When we have robots to do everything for us, it's gonna be even worse. We're gonna have to be highly motivated or things for the human race could start looking really bad, really, really fast. Thanks for watching.